good afternoon and a very warm welcome to NTV at 1. Let's begin with a look at the headlines. Transport in the city temporarily paralyzed amid resistance over attempts by KCCA to levy fees on taxis. And Black Monday activists protesting against corruption and high taxes are arrested. Also coming up, a man drowns in River Malaba. You're watching NTV at 1. Once again, a very warm welcome. I am Joel Kamadi. Now, public transport in the city was temporarily paralyzed amid a protest by taxi drivers. The drivers are opposed to an attempt by Kampala Capital City Authority to levy the 120,000 shillings charge. Police fired tear gas to disperse the, 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 the drivers and carried out arrests. <laughs> Hold it, bring it. This way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Now, on a related development, four Black Monday activists protesting against corruption and high taxes have been arrested. They were arrested outside the offices of the Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. The activists say the increase in taxes must be followed by an efficient, lean and theft-free governance. Police, however, say their protest is illegal. State House MPs. 70 ministers. Taxpayers, burden. We are orderly. orderly. We don't want to mistake you. You are our brothers. Okay. Yes, thank you very yes. much. What so you let's pass the people. Today, the 17th June 2013, delivered to the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, the following message is our initial response to her on the 2013-2014 budget that massively increased taxes on already stretched citizens. These members of the Black Monday group took part in an unlawful activity and that's why we have arrested them and we are going to produce them in court as soon as is possible. Now moving on, Buko farmers are pressing for urgent repairs on roads in their area. As one of the most productive areas of Uganda where farmers' lives have been changed by agriculture, the roads are a very serious setback. Sometimes the farmers have to travel to Kenya in order to access certain areas in Uganda. The issue of the road. The road is when it, it comes to rainy season. Even transporting Bale from just my village here down here up to here, it's become a problem. You may need to use a donkey. The roads are impassable. They, it is a muddy. It's, it's a terrible road. I think it took us like three hours or more than three hours, three and a half hours to get from up to to here and, and it wasn't raining. So I mean, I, I presume that's about the quickest that you can ever do it. Let's now take a look at the money market report. We're now going to take a short break, but NTV at one continues shortly, so do stay with us. <laughs> of the Uganda National Lottery that is changing lives. Guaranteed jackpot of 200 million Uganda shillings. Just dial star 277 hash reply and send one to buy a ticket. Please wait for the mobile money prompt and enter your pin. Your ticket will be delivered via SMS. Watch NTV at 9.50pm on Wednesday and Saturday night to find out how much you've won. Entries for the draw close at 7.30pm. You must be over 18 years to play. Play responsibly. Play Lotto. Only on MTN, Uganda's biggest mobile money network. Welcome back. Now, she may be fit to be a grandmother to those with whom she shares the same primary two class. For 73-year-old Amukule Christine, the determination to acquire an education keeps her undaunted. Christine Amukule is part of that rare breed of senior citizens who, despite the stigma and embarrassment that may come with sharing a class with children, 
go against the odds in order to read, write, speak English and generally get an education. Last year, the 73-year-old widow enrolled at St. Jude Nursery and Primary School in Oderai, Sorority District after experiencing a hard time expressing herself in English while in the United States where one of her daughters is pursuing a master's degree in economics. An education that was made possible single-handedly by Amokule herself after the death of her husband during the insurgency in Teso. The old man had no access of talking to her friends. So from there now she thought of coming back to school and that was the major thing why the old man came to school by herself without us even advising her that he go back to school. Decades on, she is now doing for herself what she did for her 15 children, funding part of her fees to the sale of ground nuts and chicken. Amukule's day begins with an early morning visit to church before heading to the school run by another of her daughters and attended by four of her grandchildren. She challenged the children from top class. Then she said that, uh -uh, I'm not fit in this class. Let me go to P2. Then she talked to the teacher, I mean, the teacher of P1. And she went to P1 and she did her work properly. Old age has made her resort to using reading glasses while in class. Her daughter, however, says Amukule is doing okay and has already learned something. She is speaking some English. And even when you check on her books, the books are okay. She's even better than the other children who, are, who began earlier. Again? Strong. 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 Again? In primary two at the moment, it may seem like a long way to go for this grandma. Even a waste of time, some may suggest. But for Christina Mukule, this educational journey is worth the while and effort. For her, education and learning have no age limit. Gabriela Penu, NTV at 1. Very beautiful and inspiring story there. Now, Kampala Capital City Authority has this morning handed over road maintenance equipment to each of the five divisions in the city. The equipment includes a tractor and a road compactor. The 720 million shillings used to purchase them was acquired from the authority's road fund. We are handing over enabling equipment to the divisions of Kampala to help them fix the roadworks themselves without incurring the heavy costs of hiring the private contractors equipment. We hope the divisions will be able to act swiftly, uh, work on the drainage, uh, work on the potholes, without really suffering long delays, as has been the case. And uh, I am happy that they are going to get relief from the old equipment that was more or less broken down. So these five tractors and their accessories will do a great job. And this will help us a lot. This will help us a lot. Because we've got the compactors, we've got the marm, Engineer uh, Chitaka assures me we can get premix that we've got a happy, happy supplier who will supply us, uh, and uh, we get these potholes fixed. Because let's be let's be serious, people. You know whether we're KCCA staff, whether we're politicians, let's be serious. If we can't fix our potholes in this city, what can we do? They had to come, and they want this tractor, and they want another tractor if possible. But I'm grateful with this tractor and the compactor because I have so many potholes in Kawempe. Now, avasectomy is perhaps one of the least favorite of family planning options for men. In a 2011 Uganda Demographic Health Survey, only 0.1% men in Uganda had avasectomy. In Health Focus, we meet a man who at age 40 decided of his own will that he was done having children. Health Focus is brought to you by Uganda National Health Consumers Organization and Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids in support of tobacco control. At 40, Amos Wekesa seems to have it all. He is a successful businessman, a husband and a father. He has three children aged eight, five and one and a half. 
these are the only children he will biologically father. But it is important for to have fewer children that you can be able to look after and be able to give them the best that you can as a parent. Wakesa had a vasectomy shortly after his third child. He has no regrets. A vasectomy is a surgical procedure for male sterilization and or permanent birth control. Because it is permanent, it is usually a last resort, but now more and more young men are opting for it. Normally we see people beyond 50 years, but increasingly today we are seeing uh, people in 40s and recently I saw one in 30 years wanting to do it. He was not interested in children. I definitely wanted to have two children. My wife wanted to have four, so we agreed on three. And when my wife finished giving birth to the third, the debate was who was going to be, you know, go through the challenge. Vasectomy is considered safer than the equivalent operation for a woman, a tubal ligation. While a vasectomy is considered minor surgery, tubal ligation is considered major surgery, requiring the patient to undergo general anesthesia. And so, Wekesa stepped up for his wife. Well, when they told me the challenges that women go through, uh, especially after they've given birth, if, uh, you know, if it's done after, you know, it would have been a challenge for her. So I thought, okay, it's good for me to go in. Because I have a disciplined mind as a person, so okay, let me go there and, ch and choke myself, as I always call it. Many men will always think that uh, it should be a woman's thing to uh, do contraception, but uh, many times today we want the men uh, to do the contraception, because sometimes a, a woman may be involved in contraception while a man strays out. For some men, the vasectomy option comes in because they have had as many children as they wanted. For others, it is for economic reasons. Some women, however, are not comfortable with their partners opting for the vasectomy. They think uh, once a man does vasectomies, he's going to become promiscuous. Uh, the fact that uh, uh, he's not going to get children, nobody will even find out that he ever became promiscuous, especially if he does it um, secretly. The temptation is that if you have gone through this process, it may, you may think it gives you free will to sleep around with everyone else. But it's very clear that you could also get HIV and spread HIV again to your loved people, like your wife and so on and so forth. With decisions that can be as life-altering as this one, the ideal would be for the couple to decide on whether or not a vasectomy suits their needs. For my case, it was purely out of discussion with my wife. But that is not always the case. Unless we find out that the wife and the husband are in agreement, we don't do it. Because it also has medical legal issues. You can do it on a man and yet the woman does not want and the, the woman sues you. And some who come into the clinic do not really know much about it. Some men do not know that there is a difference between castration and a vasectomy. And for some, circumcision is lost in between. Castration is when uh, the testicles are removed. So one has no testicles to produce uh, sperms and uh, testicles to produce uh, a male hormone. But uh, um, vasectomy is when the tubes which carry uh, sperms from the testicles to form semen are cut so that they can, they, the semen will not contain uh, sperms. But it is important to make the distinction because a wrong explanation to a doctor who does not really care to know might lead to a mistake that cannot be rectified. There are others who come when they tell you that they want castration instead, instead of uh, vasectomy. Sometimes they tell you they want circumcision and yet what they want is actually uh, a vasectomy. So we have to educate them. A vasectomy is a permanent method of birth control, but even after having one, there is the very slight chance that a man can make a woman pregnant. A lot of men mistakenly think that once the tubes that deliver the sperms are blocked, they can have unprotected sex. In fact, many viable sperm remain in the system after the operation. It can take up to 12 weeks or longer to eliminate all those sperm. Uh, one can use the issue of 22 ejaculations. Um, the 22 ejaculations completely eliminate the sperms and in uh, some specialized areas where 
uh, semen analysis can be done, uh, at least two samples of semen analysis or three, to indicate that there are no sperms have, has, have to be done. Dr. Karhanga says vasectomies are safe and efficient. Some men fear that having a vasectomy will reduce their levels of testosterone and lower their sex drive, but that is a falsehood. It is also not true that one can get prostate cancer because of having a vasectomy. There are those who fear that they could lose their children and might not be able to have others after the procedure. You can have a hundred children and all of them die. You can have one child and it stays. A small percentage of men change their minds later in life for one reason or the other. While advances in science and technology have made it possible to reverse it, the success rate of reversal is still very low. Although a vasectomy can be reversed, it should not be your option unless you really want permanent contraception. Josephine Karunji, MCC, NTV. <coughs> Tobacco kills. Say no, save lives. This message is brought to you by Uganda National Health Consumers Organization and Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids in support of tobacco control. There you have it. All you need to know about having a vasectomy. Now, a man has drowned in River Malaba in, Buta, in Buteba, sub-county in Busia district. George Wandera was carried away by the fast flowing water as he went about fishing in Manakori village. The search is on to recover his body. Confirming the incident, Amononi Otako, the area LC1 chairperson, says the deceased had gone fishing in company of his friend when tragedy struck. <laughs> Sasa hapo tu kwa dakika kidogo nikasikia mtoto yeye anatembea na yeye anakuja anatuletea report. Ati oh mtoto yeye alikuwa nimetembea nayo amekufa. Report mimi nilisikia saa kumi huyu bibi ndiye alikuja kuniambia ati ameenda na maji. Otako reveals that many people have drowned in the same river. Kwa ajili sasa nikisabu yote imekuwa karibu watu kumi na moja kama wanakufia ndani ya maji hapa. But even with the death of their colleagues at this river Absolute poverty among these people leaves them with no option but to continue fishing in order to earn a living. Now on the international sports scene, Justin Rose clinched his maiden major title to become the first Englishman for 43 years to win the U.S. Open. And in the Confederations Cup, Spain opened their campaign in style as the world and European champions outclassed Uruguay. Won by two shots from Phil Mickelson and Jason Day on a gripping final day. Rose, also the first Englishman to win a major since Nick Faldo in 1996, fired a level par 70 to end one over as overnight leader Mickelson carded 74. Australian Day took 71 as England's Luke Donald collapsed to six over on the treacherous Marion course. Rose looked up to the sky with tears in his eyes after he tapped in his final putt and admitted later to thinking of his father and longtime mentor Ken, who died from leukemia in 2002. Elsewhere, former Arsenal player Cesc Fabregas had already hit the post when Pedro's 22-yard attempt was deflected off Uruguay defender Diego Lugano into the net. World champions up and running. Roberto Soldado doubled the lead from just inside the area after a clever pass by Fabregas before the interval. Uruguay scored a consolation through Luis Suarez's fine 30-yard free kick. Absolute beauty from Luis Suarez. But had Uruguay snatched a dramatic equalizer, it would have been unfair on Spain, who produced a typically dominant performance in Brazil. In the other game, Balotelli fought his way into the penalty area and produced a fierce low shot to give the Azuri their first win over Mexico since 1993, and with it, the perfect start to their Confederations Cup campaign. Paolo himself had given Italy the lead midway through the first half with a trademark free kick. Paolo to score! What a way to celebrate your 100th international appearance. It's an exquisite strike from Andrea Pirlo. Only for Manchester United striker Javier Hernandez to bring Mexico level from the penalty spot. He scores. Didn't take long for Mexico to get back on level terms in the Maracanã. 
Chicarito sends Buffon the wrong way and gets his 33rd goal for Mexico. Balotelli! Super Mario strikes again for Italy. He's caused Mexico problems all match. Victory leaves Italy level on points with host Brazil at the top of Group A, with Japan next up on Wednesday. Now it's time for a look at today's weather forecast. And that brings NTV at one to a close. Thanks for watching. Have a good afternoon.